Gauteng MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Lebukhang Maile, has revoked with immediate effect the suspension of DA councillors Vasco da Gama and Katlejo Matiba. He says he made the decision after consulting with a senior counsel regarding the DA's legal challenge against the suspensions. Last week, Maile suspended Swani councillors uh, Vasco da Gama and uh, Katlejo Matiba without pay for three and six months respectively for allegedly breaching the code of conduct of councillors, he is expected to elaborate further on his decision at a media briefing tomorrow. But we are joined now in the studio by our reporter Sam Kele Masega to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, quite a surprising decision, I'd say, Sam Kele, considering that we had the MEC in studio, who was very, very confident, including upon legal advice, that he says that uh, his decision was correct and in line with the law. Indeed, uh, he seems to have been uh, given uh, some proper legal advice this time around by advocate uh, Tembegangduga Itobi, who has been advising him on this particular legally mm. on how to tackle the DA's uh, court challenge on the suspension of these two uh, councillors of the Democratic Alliance, the former speaker of Johannesburg, Vasco da Gama, and the incumbent speaker of the city of Tanu, Katlejo Matebe who were both suspended respectively for three and six months. So it looks as if Advocate Ngurai Tobi, who did meet with MEC Lebuchang Maile three days ago and subsequently today in the morning, they did have a follow-up meeting, seems to have advised MEC Lebuchang Maile to withdraw the suspensions of these particular two councillors, which prompted the MEC to issue out that statement mm. of rescinding the suspensions of these particular councillors. I did have a word with the MEC uh, this afternoon, who's basically saying that uh, this is not the end of it. Uh, they've been properly legal advised to rescind these particular suspensions and they used the word rescind carefully because they are preempting that they will be striking in the near future once again if uh, these particular councils, particularly the city of Twani, fails to conclude its core business of the day, should a vote of no conference or a council seating be called next week by the EFF and by the ANC to remove the mayor and the speaker of the city of Twani. Mm. Now, I want to talk about... Um as you say, it was a carefully crafted response in terms of using the term rescind. Now, one of the things that the DA had originally complained of or uh, pointed to as a problem was that the fact that he, the MC, did not um, consult counsel prior to taking his decision. Is that one of the considerations? And what is different from the advice that he originally received and what he received today? It's not yet clear what's the difference between the two advices that he, that he received, but it seems as if uh, this time around, uh, the, when it comes to the Municipal Structurals Act, uh, Tembegang Ray Toby did go into detail with that within uh, this meeting they had with the, uh, with the MEC for the past uh, three days ago and this morning. So it's not yet clear what the first legal advice said to him and what this new uh, found legal advice by Advocate Ray Toby said to him. These are the matters we'll be trying to thresh out with MEC Lebuchang Maile when he calls his press briefing tomorrow midday, but it does mm. seem as if there has been a drastic change in the tone that he's also taking and posture when it comes to dealing with these particular councils. For instance, with the city of Johannesburg, they do have a council meeting on Thursday to elect uh, the chairpersons of chairpersons and to elect the various chairpersons of the various subcommittee portfolios in council. So he is also preempting that should he proceed with this uh, legal. Uh, steps that he had taken against Vasco da Gama when it comes to the city of Johannesburg. We did also prolong councils, council sittings and it will also hamper the work of the city of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. So he is also looking at that aspect that they also do need the votes of uh, some of the opposition parties within uh, the city of Joburg Council in order to vote in the various chairpersons of the various uh, committees that need to be voted in in the city of Johannesburg on Thursday. But it's also a political tactic in the form of Lebohang Maile as also so a legal blunder from his part, from the various uh, leaders that we've spoken to mm. of the ANC and in cabinet, they're saying that what, what he went a bit overboard. What aspect of it? Because um, the DA is also arguing that he breached the uh, code of conduct of councillors, pointing to specifically uh, Schedule 1 of the local government municipal acts uh, number 32 of 2000. They are those who have spoken to, particularly within the Democratic Alliance and some within the governing party and others within the economic freedom fighters, they are saying as you have rightfully put it, that it needed to be councils, councillors within the these respective municipalities, municipalities who are the first to complain to the MEC Lebuchang Maile that these particular speakers or former speaker are hampering and are putting delaying tactics when it comes to the various motions that they've put in place. This time around, that, is, that seems not to be the case. It seems to be the MEC who acted 
without any mm. complaint or without any written uh, wording from him. one of the councillors or from the city of Twane or the city of Johannesburg. So these are the various tactics that are being employed. For instance, earlier on in one of the commercial radio stations today, we did hear the ANC leader and the ONC caucus leader and regional chairperson of Twane, Hoshimae, but being very confident, saying that uh, MEC Lebohang Maile acted legally and uh, received sound uh, legal advice when he suspended councillor Katle Homatebe in Twane. That has proven not to be uh, correct with uh, the MEC now rescinding that particular suspension of this particular speaker within uh, the city of Twane. So it seems as if that the MEC may have not gotten the legal uh, advice that he properly needed That's to sanction any of the, uh, of, of the actions that he did in these municipalities and now he's brought on board uh, Tembe Gangurai Toby to advise him. Sam I'm curious about something as well. It seems another issue that the DA is advancing is that this action that has been taken by the MEC will prevent councillors from in future representing uh, the electorate uh, you know, ably and fairly. Now, I, I'm just, what aspect of that do, did they elucidate on that? They haven't uh, yet spoken in depth of uh, the nature of uh, the actions of MEC Lebohang Maile. One of the statements that I saw from Mike Moriarty, uh, who was uh, one of the leaders of the DA in Gauteng, he said that the MEC has overreached and has abused his powers in office. For instance, with MEC Lebohang Maile in his own statement, when he suspended the two councillors of the Democratic Alliance, he said that the actions he's taken taking on the DA councillors will also have to bear fruit and will also have to be the same uh, attitude and posture he takes should any of the ANC councillors mm. uh, act in the same manner or in the same vein as these particular councillors of the Democratic Alliance. So these are the political implications it did have for the governing party's councillors in the respective municipalities in Gauteng, whether it be the Lisedi municipality or Mfulene. So these are the issues that MEC Lebohagamayele is bringing to the fore, but that would also impact on other councillors of other various political formations. For instance, I saw the EFF leader, Julius Malema, also reacting to the rescinding of the suspension of these councillors, basically uh, taking a jab at MEC Lebohang Maile and saying that he did not receive proper legal advice and is probably smoking something that has gotten to his head and should uh, listen properly to the legal advice that he's getting from Advocate Nguai Tobi, who knows his story. But it seems as if the, uh, the actions of the MEC will also have bearing and severe uh, consequences for those of the African National Congress should he have proceeded with the suspension of these two particular councillors of the DA and the legal advice that uh, they had probably received from Advocate Nguai Tobi from Maurero that we heard from the ANC was that the case was simply not winnable for the MEC. And I see that the MEC also mentioning that uh, that message has been communicated to the speakers. Thank you very much. SABC News reporter on that story, Sam Gale Maseko.